In the previous lab activities, we've now learned about all of the different groups in the periodic table, save for just a couple that are really hard to demonstrate. We learned about the reactive metals, non-reactive metals, fairly reactive nonmetals, the extremely reactive nonmetals, or the halogens. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about the completely unreactive nonmetals, the noble gases. We're going to observe some properties that noble gases have because of their complete lack of reactivity. Let's take a look at the noble gases by looking at where they are in the periodic table. Remember, they're in that group that's on the far right-hand side of the periodic table. And that group has some interesting characteristics. Let's pull one of the noble gases out to take a look at it a little more closely. Let's take out neon. Neon, you may recognize, because neon is used as an element in some lights because it gives off a distinctive red color. But did you ever ask yourself why neon gives off that distinctive red color when you run electricity through it? Let's explore that a little bit. But first, let's take a look at what makes neon a noble gas to begin with. First off, an atom is a noble gas if it has eight electrons in its outer shell far away from the nucleus. And if you look inside neon, you can see that neon has that. There are eight electrons that are far away from the nucleus in this atom. I can represent this another way by just showing you the inner 8 plus core of all of those protons, neutrons, and inner electrons, and then just those eight electrons on the outside. Notice neon has a full outer shell all by itself. It doesn't need to do anything with other atoms. It doesn't need to gain electrons. It doesn't need to share electrons. It's already fully stable. So it also has no reason to really interact with any other atoms around it because it doesn't need to do anything to get any more electrons. That causes the noble gases to have extremely low densities. They don't really pull together tightly. They spread apart from each other. They don't need each other. And they also have very low melting points for the same reason. That's why the noble gases are all gases at room temperature, because they don't have any reason to pull together to make a liquid or a solid. And then the other characteristic is that the noble gases are completely unreactive because they're already stable and they hold tightly to their electrons. Now when I say completely unreactive, I mean in nature. They don't react with other elements in nature. But humans have found some interesting ways to pull the electrons away from the noble gases to use them for certain applications. Let's take a look at what that means. So I'm going to show you what would happen if we ran a high, high voltage electric current through these extremely stable noble gases. Can we add enough energy to force the electrons out. And actually, we can add enough energy to force electrons away from the noble gases. And we can make an electron fly away, like I just did with that noble gas atom. But here's what happens. Because the noble gases are so stable, once they lose an electron, we force an electric current to flow through, they immediately grab an electron back. And when that happens, the electrons are so regularly grabbed back by the noble gas atoms, it happens the exact same way every time because of the stability of it. The energy that's given off when the noble gases gain their electrons back is always basically the same amount. It always forms the same color of light energy to give off. Because we added energy when we added electricity, the atom has to give off some energy when the electrons get added back. And it does so in the form of different colors of light. Neon gives off this bright red light energy. And it's very regular. Every time an electron is taken away, a new electron comes back and gives off just the right amount of energy to give off this red light that we see when we look at a neon light. And that's the characteristic of the noble gases we're going to be looking at today. They are extremely unreactive. They don't like to give up their electrons, but we're going to force them to in a lab by adding a high voltage electric current to them and giving them a lot of energy. However, as soon as we rip away an electron, they're going to gain one back. And the energy given off when they gain those electrons back very regularly and always the same way, the energy that's given off will show up as a certain wavelength, a certain color of light. Let's take a look. I have my tube of noble gas hooked up to the high voltage power supply. I'm going to turn on this tube. This noble gas is helium. 
Like all noble gases, helium is very stable because it has a full outer shell. Although remember, helium actually only has two electrons in its outer shell because it can't handle anymore. It's sort of unique among the noble gases. Helium gives off this peach colored light. It's very, very distinctive and it always gives off the exact same type of light. And regardless of how much energy, how much electricity you run through helium, you won't get it to chemically react with other substances because it is so stable as a noble gas. Next, I'm going to show you the noble gas we talked about in the video, neon. Neon, when you run an electric current through it, gives off this distinctive red light. And once again, it's always the exact same kind of light that it gives off because the electrons very regularly are pulled away and then pulled back to the atoms. The next element we're going to be taking a look at is a pirate's favorite element, argon. Argon gives off this purple bluish light because its electrons are pulled away from the atoms and grabbed back by the atoms a different amount than the other noble gases. But like the other noble gases, argon holds on to its eight outer electrons very carefully. And those outer electrons very regularly give off light because they regularly fall back down into their original positions. And then finally, the last noble gas we're able to take a look at is krypton. Krypton gives off a pale blue glow once again, krypton has a different color than the other noble gases because the atomic structure is different, but what's the same is that it has a full outer shell of eight electrons and it's extremely stable. These electrons do not like to be pulled away from the atom and the atom's going to pull the electrons back immediately with the same amount of pull, making them give off the same amount of energy. So now you've seen the noble gases. You know that the noble gases are extremely stable. They're so stable, in fact, that when I run an electric current through them and add energy, not only do they pull their electrons back so that they don't lose electrons, but also they will not react with other atoms because they are completely unreactive.